All right, good morning, folks. About 8.30, uh, Sunday, 27th of May. Back over to continue with paint prep, and I'm going to try to get those uh, finishing pieces on the back around the boot floor to, uh, to fit and see if I can get them on. It turns out that it appears, based on conversations with my favorite form, that they are cut improperly. So I'll uh, try to figure out a solution for that. I think I'm going to work on that first. All right, so to fit this up, one, this is not at the same bend radius as the, this curve is here, so I'm going to have to come through that. The other thing is that the depth of the finishing piece is about four-tenths of an inch, and this here runs anywhere from a half an inch down to four-tenths of an inch. So I'm going to take the grinder and just clean this up and try to make it about four-tenths of an inch just using my little metallic or metal uh, ruler here and just try to make that all about four tenths of an inch so that this will fit flush when it can. The other problem is, is that the radius of this curve here is not the same as the radius of this curve here, but uh, maybe when I trim it out it will be, we'll see. But I gotta get this to fit as flush as possible, so that's the next little trick to see if we can make it work. <laughs> an inch all the way around and then if you remember the other problem here was that this angle in my opinion should be cut like this instead of like this so like I said I had gone on my favorite form and they uh, everybody seemed to agree with that So now I'll show you a little closer here. You can see, so we're fitting up nice and flush here, relatively flush anyway. But then as you get into here, it really starts to curve away, and then it ends up way up there, split. Um, so this angle's got to be shrunk in. I'm afraid to use a shrinker stretcher to do that here. Um, maybe I can, but uh, I may use. A clamp down here just to kind of hold this and see if I can bend it in there but the last time I tried that the whole thing just kind of moved so we'll see all right so now what's happening is a titten underneath on that little lip there this part of the valance right here sorry if I'm messing up this picture um, so I may just take a cutting blade there and cut into it because I don't think I can really bend that in anymore we'll see now I think what I'm going to do instead is cut the finisher um, I want to just set essentially simply for the main fact that I just would like to keep that balance together there and there's no reason to cut through that when this finisher is is really only cosmetic so I'm just gonna mark a spot there and kind of like cut a little relief out of that finisher there all right well I think it's uh, it's about good the uh, the bend's still not great but uh, I got it to fit flush relatively flush um, I'm not gonna get it perfectly flush down here at that corner I'm not really all that concerned about that one it's not gonna be seen and two it is flush on the valance underneath uh, or really close to it so you know it is what it is there can't do much about that nail um, it is sprung a little bit so this this top edge here kind of sticks out a little bit if you can see that so what I'm gonna do is drill some plug holes three of them for now um, in this thing to attach it so I'll do maybe more than three uh, one or two down here a couple on the corner and then one or two up at the top that's how I'm gonna attach it but first I want to get everything primed up and prepped and uh, ready because this is actually going to be a piece that's going to be seam sealed and it's going to be the only time that I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to get this little area cleaned up here to remove that from, from the general area so it doesn't get in my way and, uh, and continue on down that path. So 
Uh, it's about as fitted up as I can get it. And now we'll, we'll go in the way of making it ready to actually get it in and welded. All right, so I got the area of the boot and the uh, wing prepped, painted with weld through primer. I got the piece, several, about seven holes in the uh, finisher piece there, just for plug weld. So now what I'll do is I'm going to put the seam sealer on it, that brushable stuff that I got. I think I've showed you that before. And that I got about 10 or 15 minutes according to the directions of that thing. So I'm going to paint one or two coats on that seam there and put it on the seam instead of the finisher piece. I just figured that'll be a little easier. Squeeze that thing on there and uh, clamp it in a bunch of different areas. Get any excess seam sealer out of there and uh, try to work it into the gaps a little bit and then and wipe clean what's left. And then um, with that, I'll be able to hopefully then get the welds cleaned up, let, let the seam sealer skim a little bit, get the welds cleaned up and weld that puppy in. Now I'm just using an ash brush here for the uh, seam sealer. So I hope that's okay. Stuff smells just like body filler, especially the hardener for the body filler. Reminds me of my being a kid working in my grandpa's garage when he was playing with body work, doing body work. I shouldn't say playing with it. He was a an artiste, but uh, that same smell brings me back. Many, many years. Now I still have the uh, spot at the top to worry about where that thing is cut improperly. So I haven't figured out what I'm going to do there yet, except obviously I have to add some metal. Pretty good seam under here between the um, strengthener for the inside of the boot, if you remember those pieces that I replaced. That's in here, so I just sealed that up pretty good. Big old nastiness here. I'm just gonna jam some stuff in there around where that one seam is. The seam sealer is applied, relatively cleaned up. I used both the lacquer thinner and the acetone that I have, and neither of them really cleans this stuff up that well. So I'm sure there's a solvent out there somewhere that'll clean this up, but, uh, but it's a little painful. So got it on there. It's been sitting just as long as it's been taking me to get to the weld point. I haven't really been timing anything now. Obviously several clamps along there. Got my plug welds cleaned out. So now I'm just going to go along on this side and plug weld it in and then um, probably when I put the car back down I'll come in on the other side. Um, you can kind of see on the bottom, well you can't see, but it's easier to get to these inside wells when the, when the car is the other way. So when I do the other side I'll get those and then I'll flip it again to do these. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I'm going to plug weld these in and uh, go from there. The seam sealer is flammable. Port safe tip. And not easily weldable.
just trying to get the seam sealer out of the holes here because it's really blowing up the well. It's much worse than when I don't get all the primer out of there. I may have to wait until this stuff cures. Definitely not pretty. I'll show you here. That stuff uh, really doesn't like to be welded. But thankfully, all I'm really trying to do is tack it into place. I guess I could have really used adhesive if I wanted to. So it's not uh, structural at all. It's just cosmetic. So as long as the welds clean up a little bit, uh, good enough. I'll just fill this the little pits there with. Um, with body filler and then obviously I still have this to contend with up here um, I'm gonna leave that for now and not really worry about it and deal with it when I get to the actual body work on the car but I'll have to tack something in there so I'll clean all these up and then uh, go to the other side all right, I got the car flipped obviously on the other side much uh, better fit on this one much much better um, so you can really see there how the angle is definitely cut wrong that should come up like this so again I'll have to come up with a solution there but um, only that one clamp is holding this in and it's it's nice and tight so um, given that and the fact that I don't really have to hold it in place very much I'm just gonna do uh, I think three spot welds one up here at the top one down here towards the middle and one down there towards the end again this is not a structural piece it's just a vanity piece so uh, it'll make it a little easier on the seam sealer stuff but this one, as is typical with sometimes, the one side gives you fits and the other side is, is perfectly fit. So we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Got the next trim piece on, next furniture piece. Again, uh, only three holes this time because it fit much better. A little uh, harder of a fit when the seam sealer is on there, as you might expect, because it kind of gives some lubrication there. But, uh, but it's on there. I'm going to let the seam sealer thicken up a little bit, harden up a little bit, just to try and get it to... Be a little easier to clean out of the plug weld holes and then uh, get that welded in i got the holes down there cleaned up so i'll get that welded in get that cleaned up and we'll be on our way 12 30 the two finishers are done this one went in much easier like i had mentioned uh plug welds on the top and on the bottom even though you can't see that very well so that's uh that's it for the finishers again um I'm going to have to come up with a solution for this area in here where it's cut wrong and there's a hole there too that I obviously have to fill that had brazing in it I believe or just was gone anyway so now what I'm going to do is start looking at how I want the car arranged for when I go to paint so that's the next step I'm going to do a quick one over and uh, see where I want the car placed in here and then start thinking about setting up the the paint booth quote unquote hanging plastic so uh, so we're gonna run with that and well there's prototype number one it's uh, not anywhere near done no fan or ventilation or anything but uh, it obviously it would let a little bit of paint out um, but I think this is the general idea I got these like spring-loaded post things that the garage mate had let me borrow so you just put them under tensions, just big long tension rods, and they uh, they kind of sort of hold up. So I don't know, but I, I need a better solution up top, obviously, to try to seal that up. But there's going to be more than enough room in here to paint. Uh, there's the nasty old fan that I'll try to set up some ventilation for. Um, so this will this will give me enough room, but it's now it's just a matter of making this all stuff work out. But that's uh, that's it for the day. So um, 
like I said, I have a family engagement to go to, but I got those finisher pieces on. I'm happy about that. Mostly happy with the way they came out. Not really all that concerned. Um, but I got the seam sealer in there, which, you know, is obviously important. That stuff will cure up. Um, otherwise, just those and, and this, uh, this contraption that you see before you. So, again, that's all I got for the day. And I uh, hope you have a good rest of your weekend. Enjoy your Memorial Day if you're spending it with family or friends. Again, please remember uh, what this day is for and that, uh, that it's to remember the, the people that fought and died uh, for this nation. So please, uh, please take a moment and, and think about that tomorrow in your festivities. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Please visit the website www.roundtailrestoration.com. Cheers.